In the previous video, I was talking about the subtractive and the additive color models. Now I'm going to, in detail, to explain a little bit better why those models exist and where did they came from. So actually, before the 1930s, there was uh, no standard for color. So the color models, they existed, but there was no consensus or on which model to use um, in um, in different countries or uh, around the world. Um, then in, in this year, the um, the CIE, that was a commission, international commission for lightning, decided to create a standard for color. This was necessary to, among other um, um, reasons, to represent and interpret well color in plane and ship navigation. So, um, for example, in, in planes, they have a um, light and a, a light color in each one of the wing tips. Uh, one side is red and the other is green, um, and this is used to uh, interpret the, 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 the navigation of the airplanes. So, what when we say there is a, something that as a color space, um, we define it as a space of values or a mathematical space of color that when combined can form another color. So this means that we have uh, an actual uh, mathematical space in which we can make arithmetic operations. So this allows us to do math with color and this color should match real life representation. So this um, this commission in 1931 created a standard that was based on the three stimulus and was called the uh, CA 1931 XYZ color space. The idea comes from the three rod cells presented on the human retina in which the every three sources of light with different combinations of wavelengths will produce the same stimulus. So the idea is that because we perceive color as a combination of three wavelengths, um, the, um, the color model that they wanted to, um, to propose was also um, designed as that. In the beginning, they used the, the direct RGB values. However, the, the problem with directly using RGB is that we cannot represent those RGB values only on the positive orthant of a color space. So then this, um, this commission developed the XYZ system that contain all pure color spectra in the positive orthant. So it contains colors that are represented in all other models. The LAB, LUV that were developed later to a better uh, adaptation for a human, human vision contains also the RGB that's older than the XYZ but in, is an important system. CMY and CMYK often used in, in printers and for paint. And for example, the HSV as well, that separates color into luminance, chroma, and saturation. XYZ is um, are related, but not equal to the long, medium, and short cones. There are the names of the cones that are related to red, green, and blue. In this system, Y was defined, defined as luminance, brightness, Z related to blue, but not uh, exactly. So it's um, mostly blue, but also have other combinations. And X is a mixture, a linear combination, so that we don't have negative values in this system. Uh, there's also a, there, there's a, two systems, one that's normalized and the other one that is not normalized. So when it's normalized, we represent it is using small letters. In order to visualize it, we use this um, um, this plot here. 
So as you can see here, these values are varying from 0 to 1, around 1, in, in both axes. And we have here a X and Y representation. We, we call that the XY chromaticity diagram. And by, um, by looking at those values here, what are represented around in the perimeter of this shape are um, situated wavelengths from 400 or in this case here 380 nanometers and when we circle it we have um, larger and larger wavelengths until we reach 770 nanometers which is pure red any combinations of wavelengths here produce a linear combination that match the human visual system. So this represents all color that we can perceive. However, for example, when we use a system that's very common in um, both in digital imaging and for uh, monitors and TV screens, is the sRGB. The sRGB is a system that um, contains the, the RGB um, values but are um, standard uh, a, a standard um, color system to make all, all systems compatible and the S sRGB is contained within this triangle here so inside this triangle so as you can see the this triangle here contains um, a number of wavelengths or colors that is much um, much less than we when you compare to the whole spectrum. However, this is the system that we use, and we can use them effectively to um, just to uh, represent many colors. The RGB is the addition of red, green, and blue producing color. This is a light color. So as you, as I, I said, there is a subset uh, sRGB used for system compatibility. However, this sRGB is a system that's not linear. I talked about that, that a little bit in the um, lecture about image processing introduction. We perceive light not in a linear way, but in, in a kind of a kind of logarithmic way. So it's uh, the wave, the, the way we perceive can be sometimes can be modeled by using a square root or so a square root function. Um, and because of that, the sRGB uses this function to represent the colors. So when we just apply regular um, algebraic operators on that, the math we, it will be incorrect because we are operating on a nonlinear system. So it will match very badly the real world light. In any case, we are just talking about the RGB here in this case. And we can see here that RGB can be, um, in terms of digital imaging, can, uh, can be represented by using three matrices. One matrix is um, dedicated to R, the other G and, uh, and the other B. And um, the brighter the, the color or the intensity here, um, the more we have of this specific color. So for example, here the strawberries are red, so we have a brighter um, value of R here. While uh, the red color that compose strawberries um, seldom have blue or green. In this part here that we have a green value, the green channel uh, is brighter than the other ones. In, in the table and the um, cups here that are, are in, this, um, in this picture, we can see that they are almost white, so they, they are very bright, but it's dominated by R. So, uh, so it's, it's a kind of a warm um, hue. Then R is the brighter channel, although we, we also have 
the contributions from uh, blue and also green. And when we have no light or uh, a very dark um, color as the coffee here, then we have uh, dark value in all three channels. So X, Y, and Z is a, is a system that we can um, convert to RGB and back. And this is only to show you that this can be done in using a linear uh, operation. There's also a system called LAB. This is a system that's um, based on op opponent colors. It separates brightness in L. So L is contains only the intensity values, while A and B represent the colors. It is created to be easily computed from XYZ and to be perceptibly smooth. So a change in a similar value in different colors produce a visual change of similar magnitude. So because of that, it is very good for data visualization and color interpolation. So it's very common for data scientists and vis uh, information visualization um, uh, people to use this, this system instead of RGB. It codifies visible and virtual colors containing these spaces that will contain these spaces RGB and CMYK. Because of that, it needs 16 bits per pixel for storage. The interpretation is when L is zero, we have the black color and L equals to 100, we have a diffuse white. And for values of A that are uh, negative, we have color approaching green and for um, positive values, color approaching magenta and B relates blue and yellow similarly. So A uh, is a combination between green and magenta and while B is a combination between blue and yellow. There is also um, conversion from uh, using using equations. So this is just for um, for you to have as reference. And we also have LUV system that's is similar. So L is the same, but U and V have different um, interpretations. So in here I just showed you that L contains only the brightness or the luminance of this uh, of this picture. So uh, an achromatic light, while A represents, for example, in here I don't have, um, I cannot represent negative values. So uh, black value will be the most negative one and a very bright value will be the most positive one. So as, as we saw here, uh, A, when A is, um, is a value that is positive, it approaches magenta, which will relate to the strawberries here. And similarly for B, in which we have the green, uh, sorry, so for, for values of A that are darker, it uh, approaches green. So, yeah. So this is a mixture of those. In here we have green. So we have a mixture of those. Another color model is the CMY or the CMYK. This is a subtractive system then this system is used to define pigment color. So it's often used in printers. It can be computed from RGB. So CMY can be directly computed. It's, it's a complementary system when compared to RGB. And from this system, we can observe that cyan does not reflect red. So cyan is one minus red. Similarly, magenta does not reflect green and yellow does not reflect blue. However, converting directly from one system to the other creates inconsistencies when we deal with dark colors. So um, it's easy to, to note that if we have, for example, three, um, say we have paint using three pigments, so cyan, yellow and magenta and if we try to mix them we are not going to have actually um, a black color but some brownish tone 
So the CMYK is an attempt to fix this by adding a black channel K that only has black color, black pigment to compensate for this uh, lack of uh, pigment on the other channels. So this is an RGB image uh, shown in color. And then I just converted it to CMYK to show you um, the um, what would be the pigment in to print this image so we almost have no cyan in this image so it is all um sorry uh, we, we have cyan all over the image so it's um uh, it's a very um dark image here so th in in this case we, we instead of having see that in, in the case of blue that would be something similar uh, we have we would have an image that's very uh, bright but in this case we we don't or we have as little as possible of, of cyan while for the magenta we we have pigments here near the strawberry because a mixture of m and y so magenta and yellow will produce the red that is uh, that will make the strawberry look look like red and the k here um, as you can see dark pigment or black pigment will be inserted in those regions here to uh, produce dark uh, values another system is the uh, hsv the hsv defines the color so that it codifies the chromatic component in a single channel so instead of um, having it in two channels, it has only one. The idea of this, this component, it's called HUE. It's the first one here that uh, stands for uh, H, stands for HUE. It's represented in colors in a circular shape. So in this circle, opposite colors are called complementary. So it's, uh, th their mixture creates a grayscale. So in order to create different colors, we have two other channels other than just hue. Saturation, that is S, and value, V, or also can be brightness. So hue defines the color component and its position along the circle. So as we vary hue, we change from green to yellow to um, violet and so on and so forth while saturation defines the degree of purity of some color. See here that when we mix uh, different, different colors, in the middle we have actually a, ve a very pale color, so it has a low saturation. When we have a high saturation, we have a vivid color, so it's more pure. And the value defines the amount of light in the mixture. So when we decrease value, we remove light so it becomes darker. So by changing saturation, we cannot, for example, make a, a, br a black color. Black can only be achieved by value. So in the middle of this cylinder here, so we, we, if we have any mixture of hues, of hue um, um, wavelengths, and when we we desaturate it, we make it in the, in the middle, so we have any hue but with zero saturation. We have this axis here, and by changing value, we have the, all the gray values. Sorry. H is, a, is difficult to be perceived by using a channel here, but as you can see, uh, we have different tones, so red is represented using the um, white here while green is a little bit more um, gray and then for other values we don't have almost don't have any color or any um, uh, chromatic component the saturation here defines how vivid is the color and the value is uh, basically just intensity so we, it separates, it's similar to the L of the LAB system. 
we can use this system to change um, just saturation value and hue so if i get this rgb image converted to shv and then we increase just the saturation it will make everything more vivid by changing the value to its maximum we are actually making everything more appear more bright so we increase lightness in, in all pixels but by changing hue we are actually um, we are rotating that circle so that instead of for example position it the hue in um, a red tone a head hue we are positioning it in a blue hue so it's um, almost like we have I don't know an alien uh, strawberry or something we can convert RGB to SHV and back so this is the are the formula so we, we you can use it if needed but there are uh, packages that does that for us so all those systems are, are useful to to process images and we can work with different systems and take care to use the correct color system to process images RGB is often not a very oh, um, just uh, correcting myself so sRGB is the the system that's more widely used so many um, cameras or photographs are taken and stored in sRGB and when we try to process them directly we can have uh, issues so I'm going to show you that in, in the next video when we are going to implement some of those functions using Python.